of us in reverence to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us stand to our feet. Open up your Bibles to 1 Peter chapter 5, reading verses 8 and 9. Two weeks ago, I was praying in my office and said, Lord, what do you want me to preach next time? And immediately, the Holy Spirit said, I want you to preach on spiritual warfare. And uh, this is definitely the right message at the right time because God is a God that's always on time. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. 1 Peter chapter 5, reading verses 8 and 9 in the New Living Translation in the Word of God. If you're there, say amen. amen. The Bible says, be careful. Watch out for attacks from the devil, your great enemy. He prowls around like a roaring lion looking for some victim to devour. Take a firm stand against him and be strong in your faith. Remember that your Christian brothers and sisters all over the world are going through the same kind of suffering that you are. Let's pray. Father, we pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, as this message is delivered, let it not be just another sermon, not just another message, so we go home and watch football and forget all about it. Help us, Lord God, to remember this message because it's your word. Help us to go ahead, Lord God, and put into practice your word concerning spiritual warfare. Lord, we're getting attacked by the enemy, Lord God. And we know we have the weapons of our warfare. We have the armor of God and a lot of other things I'll be talking about today in spiritual warfare. I pray in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you would just have, uh, we've already, we're standing in victory like Sister Nelly said, Lord. We're not going to have the victory. We do have the victory. But Lord, we're coming against the enemy, Lord. We're building the walls, Lord God, to protect as well as we're fighting with our swords, the enemy. And I pray in Jesus' name that you just have your perfect way and will in our hearts and lives, Lord God. I decrease in this pulpit. Holy Spirit, increase from this pulpit in the name of Jesus. Touch our hearts today, Lord God. I pray for conviction of the Holy Spirit from sin, Lord God, in our lives. I pray, Lord, your word would convict us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I pray for our mouths this morning, our tongues. Lord, let us say words of life and not words of death. Help us, Lord God, to speak your word like never before, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Help us to speak to the mountains in our lives that have been hindering us for way, way too many days. I pray in the name of Jesus, Lord God, you'd have your way and your will, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for that. We praise your mighty name. Demons, I serve notice on you right now. I evict you in the name of Jesus out of this place right now in the name of Jesus. We bind and rebuke you, Satan, away from Changing Lives Christian Church. We pray a hedge of protection, Lord God, around this building, around every one of us, around our families, around our automobiles, around our traveling, Lord. Give us your travel traveling graces, Lord God. We come against the backs that ache, the muscles that have been torn. We come against all the pain and the, and the agony that people are suffering from. We come against the harassment of Satan. We come against the uh, monitoring demons in the name of Jesus right now. We bind and rebuke them away from this place right now in the name of Jesus. Devil, let us remind you this morning, the blood of Jesus is against you. So you got to go faster than you ever came in the name of Jesus. Jesus. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. Praise God. Praise the Lord. This morning as I prepared this message, I'm going to talk about some things that you never even probably thought would have anything to do with spiritual warfare. But how many of you know our lifestyle and a lot of things in our lives have to do with spiritual warfare? Amen. A lot of things. I got a huge list in front of me here. And if I don't get done this, I'll just continue next week. Amen. Now, how many of you know preaching the Word of God is kind of like a buffet? You got to eat a little at a time or you're going to get stuffed and not digest everything you ate. As a matter of fact, you might upchuck it when you get home. We don't want nobody up chucking the Word of God. We don't want anybody up chucking the things of God or the messages of God. And so I'm going to try to go as slow as I can. I want you to try to pray to God that you digest what I'm saying this morning as much as you can. I want you to apply this message to your daily life. Don't say that's good for sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so. Don't walk in judgment. Look at the person in the mirror. Somebody say, I'm going to look at the person in the mirror this morning. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Now church, how many know the devil does not sleep, nor is the flesh yet dead? Therefore, you must never cease your preparation for battle, because on the right hand and on the left are enemies who never rest. The Christian life is not a playground, it is a battleground. Amen. The Christian life is not a playground, it's a battleground. I, I, like I said earlier, we, you know, if you're a part-time Christian, a part-time Christian will never defeat a full-time devil. 
He is out trying to, make, trying to form strongholds in Christians' hearts and their minds. He's out trying to destroy people. How many of you know the devil's a liar and he'll spend an eternity in the friar? But you are to be, uh, you are but a poor soldier of Christ if you think you can overcome without fighting and suppose you can have the crown without the conflict. Somebody say, have the crown without the conflict. Amen. Praise the Lord. Wars have never been won by people sitting around doing nothing. Amen. How many of you know battle? We got to get on the battlefield in the name of Jesus. I remember uh, Pastor Mark a long time ago, my last pastor that before I was a Christian, this was decades ago, he, he preached a message that I never ever forgot. And he said, where are your weapons of warfare? That was, the, that was the title of the message. And what he was saying is, I remember, even during, the, during him preaching and so forth, he said, you know, a lot of Christians have their swords in their shields up in their attic collecting a lot of rust, and they're never using them. And they're getting beat up by the devil. And how many you know we got to come against the devil with the weapons of our warfare that the Lord has given us? Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. So in heaven we shall appear not in armor but in robes of glory. But here on earth our spiritual armor are to be worn night and day. We must walk, work, and sleep in them or else we are not true soldiers of Christ. Amen. The Bible tells us in the Word of God in 2 Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 to 5. It says we are human and we don't wage war as humans do. We use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments. Somebody say destroy false arguments. Amen. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Somebody point to your brain, to your mind. Point to your head. How many of you know the battlefield's right there? The battlefield's in our mind. You know, I forgot, I, I just read recently an article and I forgot how many thoughts they said that a person thinks every single day. It was just a phenomenal, a phenomenal number. It was just unbelievable. How I many you know our thoughts, amen, we have to be careful to guard our gates. Amen. Our spiritual gates. What are they? What are you talking about spiritual gates, Pastor Craig? I'm talking about your eyes. Where are your eyes? Where do your eyes go? That's one gate. What are you watching on TV? What are you watching for movies? What are you reading? Uh, what, what are you looking at on, um, on social media and so forth? What are you entertaining yourself with or by? We have to also understand our ear gates. Somebody say ear gates. What is coming into our ears? Are we listening to secular music? How many of you know Led Zeppelin said, you can buy your stay away to heaven, but the Lord says, you cannot buy your stay away to heaven. Amen? You cannot earn your stay away to heaven. Amen. How many of you know, we have to understand and know, glory to God, that, Lord, uh, that, that salvation is a gift. We receive it in the name of Jesus. The Bible teaches in the Word of God that we are all going to live forever, number one. How many of you know we're going to live forever? When we die, we're going to continue to have a conscience. No, I don't believe in soul sleep. That's garbage. Because Paul the Apostle himself said in the Word of God, the authority of the Word of God, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, period. You don't soul sleep. Amen. Somebody say glory to God. Too many Christians are sleeping as it is spiritually, but you're not going to soul sleep. Glory to God. You're going straight to heaven. You're going straight to hell when you die. That's the bottom line. Somebody say glory to God. Amen. Now, how I many you know the only way we're going to get to heaven, glory to God, we've all broken God's law. We've all blown it. We have broken his perfect law. No matter how good we think we are and good morals, we've blown it. If we broke one of the commandments, the Bible says we've broken all ten. If you thought one evil thought, you've already broken all the commandments. We've also, therefore, morally, we have broken God's perfect law. Therefore, we, we either can A, pay in eternity in hell and pay for those sins, or number two, accept Jesus Christ who came from heaven to this earth to live a sinless life and to lay down his life as a substitute, to die on the cross, and so we could say, Jesus, I receive your substitutionary death. I receive you as my personal Lord and Savior. I repent for my sins right now, Lord God. I want to change. Lord, I believe your word and I want to grow in my relationship with you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The skeptic or the atheist watching me by live streaming now is saying, I don't believe that, that religious garbage. That's only what you believe. I believe the truth is what we personally, each one of us, believe it to be. 
But how many know the fact of the matter is, um, I will remind you, and I'm not trying to put you down, atheist. My prayer is that you receive Jesus Christ, because if you don't, you will spend an eternity in the lake of fire, according to the word of God. The Bible says, the fool hath said in his heart, in Psalm chapter 14, verse 1, the fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. God calls the atheist a fool. All is we have to do according to Romans chapter 1 verses 8 through 20 is we have to go outside according to the apostle Paul anointed by the Holy Spirit and look at all the heavens, look at the stars, look at God's creation and only a fool can say a, a, a creator did not create all this. Amen? Look at the solar system itself. If, if the sun was two miles closer, we'd fry. If it was two miles away from the earth, we would freeze to death. Have we ever had a day to run out of oxygen? Amen? No, because God placed it there. Why? Because he placed you and I. We're created in the image of Almighty God. God has a plan for our life. Somebody say, praise the Lord. You know, watching that movie last night back in 1890, you know, they were walking with the Lord and so forth, and they, were, they had the fear of the Lord. They had the reverence of God in their hearts and lives, and, and they were taking the Word of God seriously. They were taking different things seriously and all. And a hundred years later, people got away from all these different things, and, and, and they pointed out something very true in the movie. They said, the more we see sin, the less sensitive we get according to sin. Back in the 1890, this gentleman, he was in a time machine, and they fast-forwarded 100 years, and suddenly he wakes up with this Bible in his, in his hand, and, and he's 100 years in advance, and, he, and he's looking at people, how far they've gone away from the Lord, how irreverent they are, using the Lord's name in vain, and he says, oh my gosh, this is terrible. There was a scene in the movie where he's watching a movie, and all of a sudden, somebody uses the Lord's name in vain, and it shows the man running out and going up to the counter, or, you know, the popcorn counter, stop the movie, stop the movie! This is terrible. They're blaspheming Jesus. Why? Because he was sensitive to those things. We see that every day now on TV. We don't think a thing about it. Why? Because we're conditioned. We're, we're conditioned. The enemy's conditioning us. The more sin we see, the more insensitive we get towards it. The more a person has an addictive sin, the less and less and less they're convicted of the Holy Spirit of God. They read the word of God and they say, well, you know, come on now. We're in a different century. We're in a different time. I know the Bible says that, but how many know you got to stop the buts? The Bible says that I say it, that believes that I need to repent in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many know God is never going to change? His word's never going to change. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, or forever. His word's going to stand and people will be judged according to the word of God. Amen. Somebody say, praise the Lord. I have the victory. Amen. You know, one of the things I wrote down concerning spiritual warfare in front of me is praise and worship. How I many you know when we praise and worship the Lord, that is engaging in spiritual warfare? One thing the devil hates is God to be praised. Why do you think the devil keeps people out of churches all across this world every Sunday morning? You ever notice how interesting it is when somebody gets really tired or when somebody doesn't feel well on a Sunday morning, but yet Monday morning comes and they got full of energy, they got a great night's sleep, and they are off to work. What's the devil trying to do? He hates when we come here at 11 o'clock and lift our hands and worship God. Because the devil wants our worship. The third temptation in Matthew chapter 4 in the word of God that Jesus, uh, that, that the devil rather put upon Jesus is, I'll, uh, if you only worship me, I'll give you all of these kingdoms. The devil's trying to steal our worship away from God. And how many you know we got to worship God with all of our might? Church, when you get up at 3.05 a.m. and you can't sleep at night, you just lay down in the back of your bed and you raise your hands and you say, praise the Lord. I magnify your mighty name this morning, Lord God. I just praise you. I thank you. You're the best thing that ever happened to me, Lord God. You use that time to glorify the Lord. Amen. You go ahead and you say, Lord, I want to worship you. I want to praise you. I want to magnify your mighty name. Now, how many of you know we need to praise and worship God irregardless of how we feel or what we are going through? How many times do you hear, well, you know, I know, Pastor, I should read the Word every day, but, you know, I don't feel like it. How many of you know feelings are fickle? Somebody say glory to God. Now, every single one of us as Christians, we have self-discipline. Somebody say self-discipline. Amen. And how many you know we got to put, put self-discipline into practice? It's not going to just come to us. 
I can stand behind this pulpit for another 20, 25 years if the Lord allowed me to live that long or if the rapture doesn't come before that. Amen. Praise God and tell you, you got to read the word every day, read the word every day, read the word every day. How many times have you, have you heard Pastor Craig say, a chapter a day helps keep the devil away? Now, you can continue not to read the word, continue to make up your mind, I don't got time, and so forth, and so forth, and so on. We have 24 hours in the day. Every one of us have time. There's no excuse that we didn't have time. Somebody say, we have time. Interesting thing is in life that whatever we spend the most time about, amen, is the thing we love the most. Jesus said, if you love me, obey my commandments. I love reading the Word of God in the morning. I look forward to it. I said, Lord, what do you have for me today? But pastor, you've been reading the Word of God for a long time, been a Christian for many years, decades. Haven't you read it from cover to cover? Yeah, I have done that several times, but I praise God because I'm in a different season of my life right now, and I want to see what God has me for right today. Because different seasons change in our life, and God's Word speaks to us in those seasons. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Amen. So nobody's going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. Even the Lord Jesus cannot force you, and he won't choose to. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman. The third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God, is a gentleman. He will knock on the door of your heart. He will invite you, but he will never force you to do anything that you don't want to do. Live streamers, if you're watching by, you know, live streaming today or community television, amen, later on during the week, that's going to air, this is going to air on community TV, amen, if you, if, you know, you can either choose to come to church or choose not to come to church. Now, let me qualify this. If you have a medical issue or if you can't for whatever reason, that's understandable. But if you're sitting there and going, I'm just going to watch live streaming instead, nothing's wrong with me. I could go, but I don't choose to. Oh, well, then that's wrong. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody say glory to God. Somebody say, I want to grow in Jesus. How many know we want to do it God's way, not our way? Somebody was telling me yesterday, amen, that they, they, they went to an event and uh, there was no parking concerning the event. So what they did is they crossed the street. They saw a local Burger King and they parked in Burger King's parking lot. And they said that, uh, oh, Pastor Craig, it was terrible. They not only gave me a ticket, but they towed my car to Mattapan. I said, well, brother, guess what? You had it your way. <laughs> you know, Burger King, have it your way. <laughs> you can't park in Burger King's parking lot and go next door to a concert or whatever you were at. That's breaking the law. You deserve what you got. Somebody say, praise the Lord. Somebody else was telling me, well, I won't tell them what Pat said, but praise God anyway. It wasn't a bad thing. <laughs> praise the Lord. But how I many you know we have to understand and know we have to have it God's way, not our way. So when we worship and praise God, you can look at this in 1 Chronicles chapter 20 when you get home, verses 1 to 20, in the Word of God, when Jehoshaphat was the king of Judah, and, and three other huge nations were going to annihilate Judah. They came against Judah, and they threatened, we're going to annihilate you in, in battle and in war, but what's, what Jehoshaphat do? The first thing he did is he dropped to his knees in prayer. He declared a public fast. He wanted everybody to fast in the whole land, amen? And they all fasted, they all prayed, they got a word from a prophet in their local church, and they said, go on on the front lines with your praise and worship team and put the battle, put the uh, soldiers rather in the back. And they did that. And how many you know the Lord caused the enemy to fight amongst themselves? Yes. When we praise and worship God, how many you know the demons are fighting against themselves? Amen. Amen. But you see, when we, are, uh, when we are controlled by our attitude, whether it's good or bad, or whether good things happen or bad things happen, amen, if we don't praise God, even though the bad things are happening, the enemy is going to get a control, a foothold over our lives. And when we don't praise God, when we're going through bad circumstances, guess what? It's a revelation to every one of us. We have conditional salvation. Somebody say Conditional. All right, Lord, as long as everything goes good in my life, I'll worship you, I'll praise you, but boy, God forbid, if something doesn't go good for me, oh, that's it, I'm not going to worship and praise you. Even in the storm of life, we lift our hands, praise you, Jesus. I'm going to get through it. I know you're the anchor, and I know, Lord God, that you are the one who's going to get me through this. I know that the sails are battered, and I know the boat looks like it's going to go down, but Lord, you're my anchor, and I know you're going to get me through this in the name of Jesus. You know, praise the Lord. We... Somebody say, we got to stop viewing our circumstances in order to be distracted by Satan in order to get our eyes off of Jesus. 
if we focus on the circumstances, that's going to cause negative emotions. That's going to cause us to have anxiety. That's going to cause us to have worry. That's going to cause us to be insecure. That's going to cause us to, the Bible kind of, seems kind of heavy today. I don't, I don't know if I can quite read it. Uh, I don't know about going to church Sunday. I, I don't know about praying like I used to. Amen. How many of you know we got to focus on God, not the circumstances? The circumstances are going to come and go, but how many of you know the Lord's going to be with you forever? we got to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Colossians chapter 3 verse 2 says in the Word of God that we got to be heavenly minded, not earthly minded. Somebody say be heavenly minded. You see, you look at the problem solver and you focus on him and praise him and the problem's going to look a lot smaller. Praise the Lord. So if you focus your heart on Jesus Christ every day proactively by reading the word, by praying, by attending church, by magnifying his name, amen, how many of you know that you focus on the Lord and you say, Lord, I know you're going to get me through this. I've been through a lot before, Lord, and I know that you're going to get me through this situation in the name of Jesus. And even if we get our eyes off the Lord and if we start to sink, the Lord reaches down and he grabs our wrist in the water and he pulls us up. There's a beautiful, beautiful painting in the foyer when you first come in on the left side. And that's a depiction of when Peter took his eyes off of the Lord. And all of a sudden, he started to go down under the water. You see Jesus' hand pulling Peter's wrist up out of the water. So how many know the Lord wants us? He's teaching us. He says, look, Peter, if you keep your eyes on the circumstances, you're going to go down. Peter, you can't look at the circumstances. It's going to cause fear, worry, insecurity. And it's going to enter you. And all of a sudden, you're going to start to fall. You got to focus your heart on the Lord Jesus Christ. He's going to get you through it. As long as Peter had his eyes on the Lord, he walked on water. But the second he took his eyes off of Jesus, what happened? He started to sink. So how many know church? We got to keep our eyes on the Lord. Glory be to God. What's the next one, Pastor? Faster in fasting and praying. How many know fasting and praying is to take you to the next level of hearing from God? Amen. It's to take you on the next level of hearing from God. You're putting down the fork and you're picking up the Bible. You're putting down the fork, you're getting on your knees in prayer. You're putting down the fork and you're saying, Lord, I don't care about these cravings I have right now for that caffeine or for that food or for that, whatever the case might be, but Lord, I am focusing on you, Lord God. I want to hear from you, dear Holy Spirit. Speak to me in a special way. Open up my heart. Open up my ears. Open up my eyes, Lord God. Let me see revelation. Let me see what you want me to be doing in my life. Help me not to go ahead and just work pay my bills, go to the supermarket and do this and do that and all the regular stuff, but help me to really, really advance your kingdom while I'm on this earth. The only regret I think we're going to have, amen, uh, perhaps when we, when we get to heaven as believers to say, I should have done more for the Lord when I was on the earth. I let that career get in my way. I was distracted by that relationship that I knew was not of God to begin with. And I shouldn't have been unequally yoked. And I did all these different things when I was on the earth, but yet I didn't focus on the things of God enough to be used of Him. Whatever God's telling you to do for Him, how many of you got to step forward and do it? Because how many know it's all about Jesus? It ain't about us. And by the way, when we come to Changing Lives Christian Church Sunday morning, it ain't about Pastor Craig. It's all about Jesus Christ. We ain't coming. Don't ever come here for me. You come here for Jesus. You come here because you want to lift your hands and praise the Lord. You want to go ahead and grow in the relationship with God. You want to go ahead and encourage one another in the name of Jesus as we see the day approaching. Amen? We got to say, Lord, have your way and will. We just want to see Jesus glorified in this building. We want to see Jesus glorified in this place of worship. Yesterday, something weird was going on. A Friday, I was here Friday morning in my office. Yeah, uh, yes, uh, I'm sorry. Friday morning, I was in my office all morning. Went home around 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I have uh, on my surveillance on my phone, I have a camera that's, that's on the furnace downstairs so I can see what's going on with the furnace. For whatever strange reason, when I looked at it, I, and I was monitoring, I looked at it, and I saw this huge puddle of water underneath the furnace. I, I don't even know why, how it got there. I have no idea. And so what had happened was I put the volume up and I found out that the furnace was going on. It was running for about, a, 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 about two minutes, shutting off, kicking back on, running for two minutes, shutting off. And this, this pattern went on and on and on. From my phone, thank God for technology, I shut the furnace down. I put the temperature way down and I told Sister Agnes, well, I'll be back whenever. <laughs> Glory to God. Another furnace issue. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I joke with some people sometimes and say I spend more time with the furnace overnight than I do with my wife. Glory to God. 
We've had so many repairs with that furnace, praise the Lord. Sister Agnes recently told me, just get a bed and put her right next to the furnace. You'll be set to go. But anyway, I spent way too many days and nights and hours in, in, in this furnace trying to get this in the name of Jesus. Start right now. Amen. But anyway, what had happened was when I came, it was doing that same mess. So I shut the power off, the emergency switch on the furnace. I turned it back on again, and I just tightened up a few wires that might have been loose. I have no idea. I laid my hands on that furnace. I said, in the name of Jesus, every demon in hell, get away from this furnace. I am sick and tired of coming here in the name of Jesus with this furnace. I said, Lord, you're the plumber of all plumbers. Amen. And you can fix this furnace. I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm just the pastor. I don't know anything about, not much about furnaces. And I know you can fix this thing in the name of Jesus. Turned the power switch back on, glory to God. Fired it up. And the thing worked normal from that point until right now. Amen. I called some plumbers in the process of time, however. Perhaps a lack of faith. I don't know. But I called a couple of plumbers. One of them said, I, we can't come out until Monday. Another one said, well, we'll see if we can get a technician, Pastor Craig, to your church. However, we're $250 an hour just to let you know. So in other words, even if we can't fix it and they come in for an hour, sorry, can't do anything. See you later. Freeze to death. Bye-bye. $250, please. Now, I rebuked that thought. You know what I was going to say? I was going to say, maybe I'm in the wrong profession, but no, I rebuked that. I am in the right profession because this is where God wants me. I could be making 250 bucks an hour as a plumber, but I'd rather get souls saved and get them to heaven in the name of Jesus any day more than that. This is about eternity. This ain't about, about temporary stuff. So I can see now with that eight hours of time that I was here that the devil was just going ahead, you know, rearing his ugly head and trying once again to go ahead and attack us like he always tries to do. But how many you know greater is he that is us than he that is in the world? So God gave us the victory, amen, and he's going to be glorified. Hallelujah. Amen. How many, about, how, how many know the third thing I wrote down is spending time alone with God? Spending time alone with God. When we do so, how many know you got to turn your devices off and discipline yourself? Amen. Somebody say devices. devices. I don't know how many times when people wake up in the morning, they got to check, they, they spend some time, some people, t you know, it's over an hour just to check your messages. Oh, I got to check my Twitter account. Oh, I'm sorry, X account. <laughs> All right. I, I got I to check, I got to check Facebook. Oh my gosh, if somebody likes something, I got to make sure I tell them I like it too. I like that you like me. I don't want to be unfriended. <laughs> oh, I got to check my emails. Oh, what are these text messages? Oh, that's right. I got to check, yeah, TikTok. I got I to gotta check this the Facebook message. I got to check that, da, 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 whatever the case might be. I heard recently, believe it or not, on a program on television, a company was offering people $10,000 for you to be off your cell phone for one week. In other words, you give the company your cell phone, they'll give you 10,000 bucks. Do you know there was no takers? Oh, that's impossible. I can't do that. My whole life's on the phone, glory to God. If I lost my phone, forget it. A woman one time, and this is a true story, she's walking on a deck out, out to a pond. And she, she was walking on the deck of a pond and she was texting. And she wasn't really paying attention as she was texting. And what happened was she went right off, right into the water. And you know what she do? They, you know how they found her? When she screamed for help, she had her phone up in the air. <laughs> God forbid that my phone, you know, drowns. <laughs> I lose my life. There's nothing wrong with cell phones. We're not trying to put cell phones down or social media. I use social media all the time. You know what I do? Right now, social media, we're using that for the kingdom of God. This message is being live streamed on social media. It's going to Africa. It's going to Uganda. It's going to Ireland. It's going to a lot of different places in the world, glory to God. And people are getting touched with the word of God. So we could use what we have for the kingdom of God to advance the kingdom of God. Amen? Praise God. And that's what we need to do. We need to focus on the things of God. And we need to say, Lord, have your perfect way and will in my heart and life. So we need to spend time alone with God. Shut off all your devices. Don't worry. If somebody sends a message, uh, you can return it later on. Somebody say later on. Amen? What about pulling down strongholds in our minds and others? The, what is the definition of strongholds? How many know the devil is a master at trying to place strongholds in our hearts and minds? 
No, Pastor, what, is a, what do you mean a stronghold? The, the, the word kind of answers itself. It's a, it's a hold that is very strong. A stronghold is a demonic force, a, a demonic fortress rather, of thoughts housing evil spirits that number one, they control, dictate, and influence your attitudes and behavior. Now, let me make something clear in the outset of this when I'm talking about strongholds. Number one, a born-again Christian cannot be demon-possessed. However, a born-again Christian can be demon-oppressed. A demon outside, not inside, possessing us can harass us. And we've all experienced that over the last two weeks. Amen? So, they, they, a demon can try to change the way we think. Yeah, they can control, dictate, and influence our attitudes and our behavior. Secondly, they oppress and discourage you. You ever get discouraged for like no apparent reason? There's no negative circumstances and all of a sudden you feel down, you feel discouraged. What's going on with that? It could be a demonic force just trying to bring you down. A spirit of darkness that's just trying to bring you down. Amen? How many of you know God doesn't want us to be discouraged? He doesn't want us to be depressed. I heard one person one time say, oh, praise the Lord. I must be doing something right. Hallelujah. I'm all depressed. Glory to God. God wants me to be depressed and out. He wants me to stay in bed all day. He just wants me to shut all those uh, shades in my bedroom and just lay down there and just weep and do nothing. No, he doesn't. He wants you to get up in the name of Jesus, put those shades up and say, I get victory in Jesus. I am not discouraged. I'm a child of Almighty God. I'm a daughter of God. I'm a son of God. I love the Lord with all my heart. He has given me the victory. I'm on my way to heaven when I die one day. I know who I am in Christ Jesus and I'm not going to accept what the stupid devil's lies are coming in my heart and mind. And you tell the devil where to go and how to get there in the name of Jesus. Amen. How many know when you're in war, you don't go out in your pajamas? You know, look at the devil's beating on me, brother John. What am I going to do? Stop it, stop it, leave, go, so go away. You go right to him. Do you know who you're dealing with? And take your sword, wham, in the name of Jesus. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Somebody say praise the Lord. I just read a scripture. He roars like a lion. Well, I love one person one time years ago. They said, you know, the devil, he roars and he's trying to scare us and he's trying to bring us down. But you know something? On Calvary's cross, Jesus kicked his teeth out of his head. He can only roar and not bite. He tries to intimidate. He's the master intimidator. Amen. How many of you know that Goliath tried to intimidate the people of God? But how many of you know David was not focused on that big Goliath. In David's heart and mind, you know what he said? I'm focused on the Lord. David's attitude not was, ah, that guy's more than nine feet tall. His spear itself, the spearhead is 75 pounds. How am I going to come against this guy? All of Israel, that's what they were thinking. This guy's huge. He'll kill us. We can't go one-on-one -on -one with him. You know what David's attitude was? Well, praise the Lord. I've been spending time alone with God out, out there in the wilderness when I'm tending the sheep. I'm a young man of God. And he looked at him and goes, look at that. It's a bigger target to hit. <laughs> he took a slingshot. <laughs> Okay, here we go, Goliath, wham, and it went right into his temple. He went down, and the Bible says David took Goliath's, uh, his own sword out and cut his head off. Amen? How many you know that's how to get ahead? Somebody didn't get that, but anyway. But, but I'm serious. Goliath is symbolic in the Old Testament as intimidation. The devil will try to intimidate us. He'll use people in our lives. He'll use the workplace. He'll use something that's going on in the news, whatever it is. But how many know we got to come against that spirit of intimidation like never before in the name of Jesus? We should not be intimidated by anyone or anything. Amen? We could come against that in the name of Jesus. So number two again, what is a stronghold, Pastor Craig? It's oppressing and discouraging you. Thirdly, it, it, it's, it filters and colors how you view or react to situations, circumstances, or people. When you entertain thoughts and participate in activities that are contrary to the will of God, you open yourself up to demonic inhabitation in those areas. You're choosing to appease your flesh rather than walk in obedient trust. When these thoughts and actions become habitual, and we stress habitual, you allow a spiritual fortification to be built around that demonic spirit and its influence in your soul. There's so much in this. But how many you know that the world and the devil will right now is twisting people's minds concerning the things of God? The devil, you know, the, the, fight, the fight is about relativism. It's, it, it's about what is truth. 
You know, the devil says, truth is anything you believe it to be, and there's no absolute truth. So what is the devil doing? He's coming against the Word of God. The Bible, the Word of God, amen, is the absolute truth. If you want to know about truth and, and, and what every, th every person, why you were created, what your purpose is in life, you focus on the Word of God, the Bible. And how many know that's the absolute truth? If you have a dispute with somebody concerning a situation, you say, well, what does the Bible say about that? Because the Bible's the absolute truth. Amen? So if you say that that wall, if you say these curtains are red, okay, they're red to you. If I say they're blue, they're blue to me. If somebody else says they're black, they're black to them or whatever the case is. But you've got to have an absolute. You've got to have what is the truth. All of them can't be the truth. So how many know the devil's attacking the word of God as the truth? He's attacking the everything and everyone in the image of God. He's teaching our little tiny five-year-olds how, how to be homosexual in their literature in some schools. He's showing disgusting acts that he's showing these children that need not to be in the public schools at all. The devil's twisting minds. Recently, I heard of somebody who was on the uh, radio, um, the American Center for Law and Justice. I listen to that sometimes. Jay Sekulow, wonderful Christian opera, uh, you know, organization and so forth. They're all lawyers for the Lord. And uh, they were saying that a, a girl, amen, I think a five-year-old girl, uh, went to her school and she says, I, I'm, I'm a cat. I, I identify as a cat. So she was walking on all fours in the school and she always had to have a little bowl of milk. How sick, how far have we gone from reality? Amen. How I many you know this is all satanic? This is all twisting our young kids. So when they grow up, they're going to be all messed up in the head. We have to understand, parents, if you have children, you've got to bring those children up in the things of Almighty God. You've got to tell them at the very earliest possible age that Jesus loves you. You've got to share the gospel message with them. Get on your knees at night and pray for them before they go to bed. Read a Bible story to them. Explain it to them. Tell them that Jesus loves you and mom and dad love you. Amen. Tell them that Jesus is the only way to go. If our kids, amen, praise the Lord, if they're young now and they get to be our age, if the Lord tarries, man, I'll tell you what, they're going to need Jesus more than ever. Amen? Praise God. You know, we got to tell people the truth. Somebody say the truth. The truth is in the word of Almighty God. God wants us to grow in our relationship with him like never before. Amen? Praise God. The next one I wrote down was having the fear of God. Somebody say fear of God. Mm. I want to ask a question, and I'm not saying this in judgment at all. In all the churches in America, all the churches in the whole world, as a matter of fact, the ones who assemble to worship the Lord every week. How many of those Christians that go to those churches really have the fear of the Lord? The fear of the Lord means that we hate what God hates, that we love what God loves. It means that even, it, it means that we're people of integrity, that even if we're alone and no other human being is going to know that we, we're going to participate of a particular sin, we choose not to because we know we have the fear of the Lord. We're going to have to stand before the Lord at judgment day and give an account for why we did that sin. The fear of the Lord is extremely important, Amen. We can't be lackadaisical about that. we got to say, Lord, help me to walk in fear. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If you want wisdom, begin with having the fear of the Lord. And by the way, don't look to your left, don't look to your right. Well, well this brother doesn't really look like he has the fear of the Lord. I know what sin he's involved in. And what about that sister over there? I know what she's involved in. They don't have the fear. Of, why should I have the fear? You're going to stand one-on-one -on -one before God, not as a couple, not as a group. Pastor will not be with you. Amen? How I many know we have to give an account individually to the Lord for our life? And the Lord is going to take the Word of God, the Bible, and that's how He's going to judge us according to His own Word. So how I many know that should really, really encourage us the next time we're tempted to sin and we could, quote, get away with it, humanly speaking? How about this? We run away from it. We say, no, I won't do that in the name of Jesus. I want to have a clear conscience like the Bible says. In order to have a clear conscience, i got to say, i got to stay away from sin in the name of Jesus. Sin is a spiritual cancer. Sin will bring you down. It takes you farther than you, what you want to go. And you pay a higher price than you ever wanted to pay. That's what sin does. Amen? How I many you know, well, I just want to have, I just want to sin, have a little sinful pleasure. No. Run away from it in the name of Jesus. Put the Lord first. Amen. 
The Bible tells us in the Word of God that we got to say, we got to go ahead and have a clear conscience. We want to walk with the Lord like never before to have His perfect way and will in our hearts and lives. Amen. So I'm not even done. Uh, I'm not even done half this list. And like I said, I don't want to give you too much in this buffet. How many you know we got to digest what we've got? Somebody say digest. We're going to say, Lord, help me to have an inventory in my heart right now of what we talked about today. Do I have the fear of the Lord operating in my life? Uh, you know, am I, do I have any strongholds that are really trying to pull me down? <clears throat> what do I need to do to come against these things that are of the devil in the name of Jesus? Lord, have your perfect way and will in my heart and life. Because, Lord, I just want to grow in my relationship with you. Amen? Somebody say praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, as I said earlier, um, we, were going, we have 21 days of wonderful devotions that, that have been put together. Uh, Sister Agnes spent a long time doing this. She, she spends months doing this. So we praise God for all the uh, effort and the work. Amen. And um, today is day 15, Sunday, January the 21st. And the devotional is entitled, <clears throat> Such a Time as This. Somebody say, such a time as this. This is what the devotional says. And if you want some devotional copies, if you don't have one, see Sister Agnes, she'll get you one. It says, imagine suddenly in one day, without any warning or indication, that not only would your life and the lives of your family and loved ones be in danger, but sought after. Imagine that people would be offered money to take your life and possessions. What if, in a moment... You have to go from living comfortably day to day to preparing to defend, protect it, or run for your lives. This is how it was in the days of Esther for God's people. Haman, the prime minister of Persia, served under King Xerxes over the Jews in exile and plotted against Mordecai and his fellow Jewish nation to have them destroyed. Can you imagine the fear, the despair, the anguish the scriptures say that in every province there was great mourning among the Jews with fasting, weeping, and wailing. However, despite all this, Mordecai says these words to Esther. For if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance will arise for the Jews from another place and you in your father's house will perish. And who knows whether you have not attained royalty for such a time as this. See, no matter how dark it was getting, no matter how bad it looked, Esther was positioned in a perfect place to do something for such a time as this. Esther was elevated, I'd say by divine grace, through di divine disappointment, and from an adopted girl exiled in a foreign land to the favored queen, according to Esther chapter 4 and chapters 5. Um, of that foreign land. The great news for us is that we were once orphans in regards to the faith and eternal life, but God the Father has adopted us as his very own children through the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Somebody say, I'm adopted. Amen. And he has divinely positioned us where we are now seated with Christ in heavenly places. You are favored by the King of Kings, according to uh, Psalm 5 and 12. So no matter how dark things get, you may already be, no matter what happens in, your, in this life, no matter how you feel, you were born, called, positioned, and favored, and for such a time as this. In Ephesians 5 and 16, Paul says these words, redeeming the time because the days are evil. That word redeem means fully buy back the action of saving or being saved from sin, error or evil, gain or regain possession of. There's, no, there's so much that tries to take our time away from our mission, we need to take it back. As Mordecai told Esther, if you don't go, if you don't rise up, if you don't open your mouth, God will raise another for his mission, for his deliverance. We can choose to remain seated and quiet in our comfort zone, but the truth is, now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. The whole earth is waiting for the revealing of the children of God. They're waiting for us to show them the glorious truth of our God for us to give them in living hope in the world of hopelessness. They're waiting for us to rise up and be a city set on a hill. They need the light we have to offer in the midst of darkness. All creation is groaning for such a time as this. Rise, church of the living God, sons and daughters, rise and shine. We must work the works of him who sent us long as it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. 
Amen. How many of you know God has blessed us with another day this morning? We woke up. Who this afternoon can we bless? Who this afternoon can we share the word of God with? Who this afternoon can we send a text message to encourage perhaps that are sick or not feeling well? Who today, how can we advance the kingdom of God? Amen. Let's stand to our feet and close with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for this morning. I magnify your name, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we're in the midst of our 21-day fasting and prayer. We thank you that we already have victory. No matter what happens in this fast, Lord God, whether we're discouraged or, or whether we're despondent, whatever the case might be, Lord God, we know we have the victory. We're going we're gonna to move forward like never before, Lord God, as such a time as this. So, Lord, I pray against every stronghold in people's hearts and lives. We come against it in the name of Jesus, when the blood of Jesus is against that. I pray, Lord, people will be delivered. I pray, Lord God, people would grow in their relationship with you like never before. Open our hearts, our minds, our eyes, our spiritual ears to the things, Lord God, that you want us to hear and see. Father, we thank you for that and we praise you and we ask this all in Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Give the Lord a Thank you, Pastor. Good morning, church. Good morning. Praise God, praise God, praise God. It seems like I didn't see you from last year. Did I see you from last year? Oh, did I see you since this year? Of course I did. <laughs> but I've been away for like two weeks and I'm like, oh my God, come hell, come high water. I will be in church this morning, regardless of how I'm feeling. I couldn't let another week pass and I'm not here. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. God mercy kept me. Mighty God. It's been... Uh, <laughs> A whole lot of stuff going on because the devil is mad. You see, mm -hmm. when you're on the battlefield for the Lord, you see, when the devil wants to catch you in his trap, I'm telling you, he turned up the thing. Yeah? He, I incurred the devil's wrath. And I'm telling you, he's coming like, at me like, bam, bam, bam. But you know something? I'm fighting back. And I'm not fighting Amen. for victory. I am fighting in victory. Oh, Amen. bless the name of That's the right. Lord. Amen. Glory to That's God. right. Hallelujah. You see, when you know who's you are, mighty God, the God you serve, hallelujah, then ah, the devil is going to get a knockout punch every time. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. He may knock you down because guess what? He's very subtle, but he cannot knock you out. He will Amen. not give you that knockout punch. Oh, bless the name of the Lord Jesus. Glory mm -hmm. to God. And because of that, I have to ask God. And we all have to ask God. Oh, Lord, send me a surplus of praise within my soul. A surplus of joy, of peace, and of hope and love. A surplus of meekness, temperance and patience, and faith both great and small, and send some endurance, for I needed it most of all. Oh Lord, send me a surplus of praise within my soul, a surplus of joy, of peace and of hope and love, a surplus of meekness, temperance and patience, and faith both great and small, and send some endurance for I needed it most of all. Lord, my life is like a jigsaw puzzle. When the pieces are all out of place, I try my best, Lord, to put it back together. But my storeroom is empty and my resource is all gone dry. So Lord, send me a surplus of praise within my soul. 
a surplus of joy, of peace and of hope and love, a surplus of meekness, temperance and patience, and faith both great and small, and sense of endurance, for I needed it most of all. Lord, my life is like a jigsaw puzzle. When the pieces are all out of place, I try my best, Lord, to put it all together. But my storeroom is empty. And my resource is all gone dry. Oh Lord, I know that my account with you is not balanced, which means my soul is now standing in arrears. My enemy knows I'm, I'm living on a spiritual debit And soon I'll be bankrupt If I stay this way too long Oh Lord, send me a surplus Of praise within my soul A surplus of joy of peace and of hope and love, a surplus of meekness, temperance and patience, and faith both great and small, and sense of endurance, for I needed it most of all. And send some endurance, for I needed it most of all. Lord, send some endurance, for I needed it most of all. Most of all. In times like these, we have to ask for a surplus of everything. A surplus of the fruit of the spirit. We need it. Because I'm telling you, we are in a spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. And it is turned up. It is turned up. Because when the enemy comes at you and he cannot get you, he'll come at your family member. Up. Hey, Jesus, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? My daughter crashed in December. And my other daughter crashed on Monday. Yesterday I got the news from Jamaica. A friend of mine crashed. He died. Another one. Both hands are gone. And me, those are close people to me. The devil is mad. The demons of accident. So we have to pray against. All portals are open. We need to pray against these things. We are in fasting. Let us look some prayer point. My God Almighty. And pray against these strongholds. Pray against these portals. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now.
I am Pastor Craig Matheson. I just want to encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now, those of you watching by YouTube right now, all you have to do is on the right bottom side of your screen, you'll see a little red subscribe button. Click on that subscribe button, then you're going to see a notification bell come up. Click on the notification bell. From that point on, every service and every video that we have is going to be, you'll be notified in order to see it. Now, those of you watching by community television, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel. All you need to do is log on to YouTube.com, then in the, in the search engine, type in Changing Lives Christian Church, and then our, then our, um, our YouTube channel is going to come up. Then just hit the subscribe key and the notification bell after that, and then you will also be notified every time we have a church service or a special video. So I just want to encourage you to go ahead and to do that, and I hope you have a fantastic day today, and may God bless you.